I've been wanting to do a video for quite some time on gas pressure testing, and Matt Milton and Robert Severson were nice enough to shoot some quick videos of testing two different types of equipment. Robert is doing a rooftop unit, Matt is doing a split system, and they're showing how they test gas pressure, and also Matt shows us a little bit of adjusting of gas pressure. Whenever we talk about gas, I have to be very clear, this is only for trained professionals. A video is not a full description of all of this, and you have to follow all best safety practices. One really important thing they showed is how critical it is to shut the gas off beforehand, shut it off afterwards, and make sure you get those plugs back in. It can create a very, very dangerous situation if you do not get those plugs back in and well sealed. And you should always use a combustible gas leak detector to check afterwards, as well as soap bubbles and good old common sense. So here we go. Here's Matt to start with. Okay, guys. So uh, here we are uh, trying to test our pressure, gas pressure uh, for my furnace here that we're working with. And just a couple of tools that I'm using here today. Uh, I'm using two of the Testo uh, 510i Smart Probes. I'm going to use those in conjunction with the um, MeasureQuick app. I've got a couple pieces of tubing here uh, that we're going to connect to uh, to measure the gas pressure in between the manifold and the um, manometers themselves. Something you may need to look for and find are uh, two little hose adapters. This one is uh, a quarter inch by one eighth. Uh, this one might be a little bit bigger. Both of these are one eighth inch uh, pipe threads. Uh, you can find these at Home Depot or Lowe's or maybe even your supply house, but it's a one eighth inch thread male MPT uh, to a hose adapter. So you've got uh, different size hose adapters. This is a little bit hose, a little bit bigger one. This one is a little bit smaller one. So depending on which hose you're using, uh, you might need to get uh, one size or the other or get just a, an assortment of a few. But all of the gas valves going to be uh, this 1 8 inch uh, uh, threading here. Uh, also something I have are my uh, service wrench and I have an additional uh, just plain old Allen wrench. Both of these are 3 16 3 16 is the number. First thing you want to do at our furnace here always is to go ahead and turn off our gas line. When the uh, gas valve is in the horizontal position, in this case, it is off or perpendicular to the pipe. Uh, so it is off here. Now I'm going to come down here into my furnace and I have a plug here. This is going to be my supply side uh, to remove. And there is another one down here at the bottom, which you can't see, which is your uh, manifold side. So I'm going to take those off here while the gas is off and insert my plug and we'll come back in just a second. Okay, so here we go. We've got everything set up here. I've got my supply side on and I've got my manifold supply on. A note when you're working with these eighth inch plugs, the taper plugs to the um, to the hose here, these do not need to be super crazy tight. Um, just, just finger tight and just barely finger tight. You just want to be able to get them in here and get them snug so they don't leak, um, but they don't need to be crazy tight. You don't need to put a wrench on those. Uh, when you seal them up, definitely you want to get them tight. But as we're measuring here, uh, tightness is not the greatest thing here. All right, here's my two manometers down here. I've got one for the supply and one for the manifold. I've got them labeled. You don't have to do that. If you've only got one uh, manifold or one manometer, uh, you can just do this one at a time. Uh, I'm lucky to have both, so I'm going to do both of them at the same time here. All right, so here's a picture of uh, the nameplate label. You can see this is uh, model number GME 80603BNBB. This is a good enough piece of equipment. Uh, that label says that it is an 80% efficient, 60,000 BTUs of input. Uh, you can see it's got the rated input there just below it, as well as the rated output and the uh, temperature rise that is recommended of 20 to 50 degrees. Uh, down here towards the bottom, it gives you the maximum gas supply pressures uh, in uh, natural gas is 7. Uh, gives you the minimum supply pressure, a little bit hard to see here, but it is 5 and the manifold pressure is 3.5 inches. Our orifice size is a 45. So that's the information we're getting off of uh, the furnace itself there. All right guys, so here we are. Uh, I've got this uh, furnace fired now. We are on low stage. 
it's showing me that we have a manometer pressure, a manifold pressure of 2.34. We should be at 1.9, so this needs to be adjusted. All right, guys, now I am up into high fire on my gas furnace. It takes a little bit of time to get there, but you can see that I've got a uh, manifold pressure now of 3.79, 3.78. So I need to adjust this uh, pressure down. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert my, uh, my Torx tool here, and I'm going to move this counterclockwise to get this down to my 3.5. And pull it out here. Let's see how it looks. 3.49, 3.5. We are good to go. All right, guys. Now I've got everything set, finished up here. I just need to take uh, all of my tubing and everything off here. Just some things to rem remind you about is once you have finished doing all your adjustments, go ahead and shut the furnace down and let it cool down naturally. Make sure that blower stays on for that full time so we don't stress our heat exchanger. Uh, once we get all that done, we're going to put everything back together. I've got my two plugs here I need to adjust or put back in. These were for adjusting my pressures, my manifold pressure in high fire. This is my low fire here, my high fire over here. I'm going to take off uh, my two um, test ports. Again, make sure you shut that gas off now that you're getting ready to remove that. Uh, and it's always very important to don't forget to put those plugs back in once you are done. So I'm pulling out my plugs here. And the first thing you should always do is put that plug back in. All right, so I'm getting this one plugged back in here. I've got one at the bottom to do as well. I'll pull that one off. Last thing, uh, just depending on what gas, gas brand you have, make sure you look at your uh, installation instructions. Some instructions have you adjust the high side gas pressure first and then adjust the low. Some of them have you adjust the low first and then the high. Uh, if you don't do it in the order that they have specified or told you to do, you sometimes will get gas pressures that are funky in the opposite stage. So just make sure you're following the recommendations of the manufacturer. Uh, if you have questions, you can always call your, your rep or the people at um, the supply house and they probably can help you out maybe. All right, so again, this is Matt with Scientific Comfort Services uh, talking to you about uh, checking manifold pressure. Thanks so much, guys. All right, hey guys. So I am out here doing a service on a carrier package unit that uh, wasn't heating. So what I wanted to do while I was here was show you how to do, uh, how to check your gas pressure. And this one particularly will go down right where it says uh, gas supply pressure and manifold pressure. So our supply pressure will have a max and a minimum. Uh, this one is 13 inches water column or 3.24 kPa. That's our max. Our minimum is going to be 4 inches water column or 1 kPa max. And then we'll have a um, manifold pressure. And that one is going to be on the high fire because this is a two stage unit. It'll be 3.5 inches water column or 0.87 kPa. 2 inches water column or 0.5 kPa on our low fire. This is your gas valve here, uh, your inducer, your manifold with all your burners and obviously the heat exchangers behind that plate there. So the places you're going to check your gas pressure on this one, you're going to make sure or you're going to see a little port here with an Allen screw. Um, and then the same thing on the other side, you'll have the same screw usually, usually on the same side just opposite. Um, so. We'll take that out and that's how we'll check our incoming pressure and then this one behind here will tell us our manifold pressure. So I went ahead and got those plugs taken out. Those are them. Um, you can use Allen wrenches but I prefer to use my uh, ratcheting service wrench. Just as faster works better. So see that one's out and the one in the back on this side is out. And then let me grab the tools real quick you'll use to check uh, the gas pressure. So this guy right here is going to be a manometer. Um, it does a couple of things. You can check static pressure with it if you have pitot tubes. Um, this one is really nice, the Philpiece SDMN6, because it'll also test pressure switches. So it's got a little pump on it that will either pressurize or it'll suck down negative uh, to test those pressure switches. And then they'll be attached to some hoses here. Um, and on the end of them, you will have bits like this one. 
So that bit is going to screw into that little hole right there. Um, and the hose will hook up between this and the manometer to tell us our pressure. I went ahead and shut my gas off. First, always make sure you set, shut your incoming gas off before you take these plugs out. But I went ahead and got those uh, adapters in there. See, that's the other one. On these, it, it doesn't need to be super tight. Just finger tight and then a couple turns with a crescent wrench is fine. But on our manometer here, what we're going to do is we turn it on. So it's reading zero now. So what we'll do is we'll zero it out just to make sure, make sure we get a correct and accurate reading. Go ahead and turn the gas pressure back on. You see we're reading about 14.8. Um, it'll, it'll drop down a little bit as well when the unit does kick on, just takes a little bit of gas. Um, so let's go ahead and kick this unit on and I'll show you what your manifold. I went ahead and got the unit running now. Um, it's kicked on and going good. It's running in its low fire right now. So it's first stage, which is 2.26. And if you remember, the nomenclature said that you wanted to be around two. If you're up a little bit, it's not too big of a deal. You don't want to be up any more than about 5% because that's too much. On this one, in a minute here, it'll kick into high fire. Uh, and it'll go up to the 3.5. That, in a nutshell, is checking gas pressure. Um, if you have any questions, let us know. Thanks. I just want to quickly show the adjustment points and the test points on a gas valve that you can see. Now, obviously, gas valves vary quite a bit, just like Robert and Matt were saying. And so these would be the two test points. But this is the adjustment point. And one thing that a lot of new technicians who haven't worked on a lot of gas might get confused by is they may think that this is the adjustment. This is actually just the cap. So this right here is just a cap that covers the adjustment screw. And so when you take this cap off, then inside of there is the adjustment and a big thing to know is, is that when you turn it clockwise, you're going to increase the output gas pressure. And when you turn it counterclockwise, you're going to decrease the output gas pressure. When you have a two-stage furnace with high fire and low fire, then you're going to have two separate adjustment points. Hey, thanks for watching. I want to just state once again that safety practices are extremely important when working with gas. Make sure to get those plugs back in and make sure to follow manufacturer recommendations. This is the kind of thing you're going to want to do with the manual open. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.